What questions do you have about model rocketry? That's what we're going to talk about in this episode. Welcome to Advanced Construction Videos, where we show you how to tackle rocketry, building techniques, and more. On our website, we sell kits, motors, building supplies, and electronics. So come and learn, shop, build, and fly when you visit us at ApogeeRockets.com. Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan from Apogee Components. We put out a survey to customers and viewers on this channel about what specific questions that they want me to answer. And we got probably almost two dozen questions that came in. And today I'm going to try to answer them. So let's get started. Okay, Swede Heaven 88 asks, upgrading rocket kits from cardstock to plywood, fins, and rings. What are the pros and cons of such a choice? Well, I can guarantee you this, plywood is always going to be the strongest if you're going to do an upgrade, other than if you went to fiberglass. Plywood is just, it's really strong. The disadvantage is it's heavier. And if you have to cut your own parts, it's harder to cut. Cardstock is easier to cut. It's lighter, but not as strong. So those are your trade-offs that you have to make. So how strong do you need to make your rocket? That's a question that only you can answer. My rule of thumb is, you know, like if I built a rocket, and I had it sitting on my table and it falls off the table and lands on the floor. That's approximately a three foot drop. So if my rockets can survive a three foot drop off of a table, I think it's strong enough. You know, big heavy rockets, when they fall off the table, you know, you need to build them a little bit stronger because when they land, it's got more momentum and more mass. And so things can break. So you have to make them stronger. So you're, you know, instead of using surface mount fins, you're going to use through the wall fins. You might use epoxy fillets on them. And this is the art instead of the science of rocketry. The art is making it strong enough because whenever you make things stronger, you're adding weight. You want to keep things as light as possible so that they go high. So you have to have that trade off. This is Horseman Aerospace says, tell us more about the new missile meteor altimeter. Is there any other electronics from that company, such as a tracker or dual to play? So the answer, again, here's the missile meter. The answer is no, there's no other electronics from this company that we use to make it. If you want dual deploy, that's really nice. We've got a lot of them on our website. Just go to the shop menu here, come down here to electronics and payloads. That's what you want. And then you can see the different altimeters. So we have just simple altimeters. If you want dual deployment, you can click on that link and you can see all the different devices that we have. And these are all great devices. Um, if they weren't great, we wouldn't be selling them on our website. And you ask, well, which is the best? Well, the answer is it depends on what you want to do and how much information you want after the flight. And a lot of times we carry multiples because we sell out fast. Like this one right here, we have sold out. And so we have options in case something is sold out. Pluto Studios Real says, what is the highest possible height for a non-high power rocket using anything like sugar motors or shaped fins? Well, um, what I had here on the screen is our Aspire rocket. And you can see, I've been talking about this. This is our highest flying non-high power rocket. So this rocket, I can choose an engine. The Apogee F10 is a long burn motor, which we talked about earlier. And if I launch this, and this was, you know, almost 5,000 feet. So it's 4,993 feet on an F10. That rocket, which is probably like that much longer than this one that I'm holding, at 5,000 feet, that's like a mile, almost a mile away. Will you see it? So imagine taking this rocket and then walking a mile away and then looking back, can you see that rocket? And now change it so you're looking at that butt end because that's what you're going to be looking at when you're looking up. You're looking at this butt end. So you're not even going to see it at that distance. So be careful what you ask for because you can go high, but you want to get it back. And then the question about sugar motors, it, that's kind of an irrelevant question because it doesn't matter what the propellant is. It only matters is how much power or, you know, how many Newton seconds of power that motor produces. What really matters is how much thrust and how long it burns. And that's going to determine how high it goes. 
And for doing something like that, again, we recommend the Roxim or Roxim Pro software because it's gonna tell you how high you're gonna go. And Roxim Pro is also gonna kind of give you an indication of where it's gonna land. So in case you do lose it and you know the wind was blowing that way, you can run your simulation and kind of figure out how far you might have to walk to go get your rocket. Gary V. Nema asks, I'm working my way from low power to mid power and high power rockets. Have already done my level one cert. At what point should I reinforce body tubes with fiberglass or just use pre-made fiberglass tubes? This is another one of those questions like, it depends. <laughs> fiberglass, you know, if you have a solid fiberglass rocket, the disadvantage is it's heavy. It's not gonna go as high. You're gonna need bigger engines, which are more expensive. The, the advantage though is like they are like super strong. You can stand on them, you can be really abusing them and they're gonna go and go and go forever. The disadvantage is they're heavy. If you want something that's stronger than paper tubes, but not quite as heavy as a solid fiberglass rocket, is a paper tube that has been laminated with a fiberglass skin. This gives you kind of like the best of both worlds. It's strong, but it's still relatively lightweight. If you use carbon fiber instead of fiberglass, it's even lighter and even stronger. Carbon fiber is, when I do competition rockets, that's what they're made out of because it's like super light and they're strong enough. You know, the process of laminating a body tube and fins with fiberglass or carbon fiber and epoxy, it's messy, it's time consuming, and it takes a little bit more practice. A lot of people do it and it works great. So give it a try if you're up to it. It can be done. I've done it. It works great. So, so when should you do it? You can make a really strong rocket out of paper. You can do a level three rocket with paper tubes. It depends on, on the speed of the rocket because the faster you go, the more forces are on the rocket. So if you're planning to go supersonic, at that point, I would say, yeah, definitely at least laminate the rocket. And if using a fiberglass kit can work, but you're gonna need an even bigger motor because they are much heavier. It Overstoke writes, tip on how to build a homemade nose cone. I'm doing a one quarter scale Nike smoke and need to make one for it. Okay, so if you're doing a scale model rocket nose cone, my suggestion is to 3D print it. Now I know most people don't have 3D printers yet, but if it's a scale nose cone, you need that exact shape, I would go ahead and find somebody that can do it for you. And that's easy. Go on the internet, do a search on somebody that can 3D print parts for you. And you know, that's the way I started, but then I learned CAD myself. My first 3D prints were done at the local public library. I just wanted to make sure that if I was going to invest in this process of developing 3D parts, you know, this was like 10 years ago, it worked back then and it's even better now. So 3D printing it is the way to go. And if you're doing just anything that's a one-off, 3D printing, <laughs> even if it's not one off 3D printing. You can carve a nose cone. It's a lot harder. I've done it. I think I even have a technical video on it. Books and videos. Okay, so again, so how I got that, I went to shopping menu. I went down to rocket books and videos. And then on the videos, I selected videos and if you go down here, it's like make a custom nose cone with simple hand tools. This was a CD-ROM, but I think we have it online now where you can carve them. That's the technique you're gonna use. So it can be done. You can chuck it up and spin one in a lathe or a drill press. I've done that too. Handmade nose cones are not gonna be perfect where, where 3D printing is pretty close to perfect. Hope that answers your question. I get that's all the questions. That was a lot of questions. This might have to be a two part. So thanks for watching. If you have other questions, just, you know, be sure to come to the Apogee website. You'll find our contact form there where you can ask your question. We also have this free newsletter. Please be sign up for it. It's like where you get all this information. Like I said, you know, you saw we, how many hundreds of videos we have, hundreds of newsletters that we have. Well, you get notified of these newsletters every week because we put one out every week and they're all great how-to information like what you're watching right now. 
So be sure to subscribe to that newsletter. Again, my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, may all your rockets fly straight and true.